Hi and good evening. Thank you for joining me tonight on Real Talk with Jean Price. I'm glad you stopped in today. Listen, you have time to like, you have time to share, you have time to tell people that Real Talk is on. We have a great guest on our show tonight and I'm excited. I'm excited to hear her story. I'm excited for you to hear her story. I'm excited for you to know a little bit about her, what she does, what she has done. I think the greatest part that I love so much about what we do in Real Talk is that we love celebrating other people, their accomplishments, their goals. We even talk about our failures and our disappointments because I think the authenticity, right, of being real is what makes this show so good and so popular and it's so inviting. So again, sit back, we want you to relax. Real Talk with Gene Price is on the air and we're ready to get started. So help me welcome my guest. Wow, excited to welcome Rose Ellie. Elizia, I hope I pronounced it right. And tonight we're going to be talking about empowering women. Welcome to the show, Rose. How are you? Hello. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Listen, I am so glad you accepted the invitation to be on the show. Can't wait to dive into this conversation. Be at home, relax. And normally our guests would chime in and ask questions, and we're glad about that. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself before we get started? Okay, so my name is Rose Eliza. Um, I'm a woman that wears many hats. <laughs> um, I'm a mother. Um, I'm also a nurse, a student, a child of God, an entrepreneur. Um, I also have a nonprofit organization called Real, reaching everyone all over with God's love, um, where we go to different countries or we try to help people locally with basic needs. Um, I'm just me. <laughs> well, let me just say this with all the things that you've listed i know there's probably so much more that we do do as women right um, and but i want to kind of dive into a couple of things that you talked about i want to start with your career where did you decide to be a nurse because my daughter's a nurse and i think what you do to help people is so beautiful so how did you get started with that so how i got started with nursing is that um Originally, when I became a mom at 18, um, I got into like home health care and CNA and, you know, um, I like I love caring for people um, working in um, a nursing home. And I always seen myself um, going up the ladder, you know, um, being young, um, smart. And, you know, yes, I did have a child um, early and, you know, I just had a high school diploma. But I seen myself always going up the ladder. So pretty much I felt like, you know, um, I do have leadership skills and why not go up the ladder? And, you know, God graced me. Um, I do believe in education. That's one thing I do believe in <laughs> is education. So, yes, I love caring for people. And I believe, you know, if you could go higher and higher in your field or whatever you love, go after it. Right. You know what? Um, you said something that was so great. You said you were a mom at a young age and many of us me included can relate to that and you know when you when you realize that you're going to be a mom so early so much comes upon you the fear the unknown just not even knowing right how you're going to navigate that season of your life but somehow or another just like you said god gives us my favorite word is the grace right mm -hmm. yeah. somehow get through it what was it like trying to balance all the things that you listed as a mom at such a young age because somebody needs to know how you did it. Well, it wasn't easy. I'm going to be honest with you. It wasn't easy because, you know, I'm, you know, I'm pregnant and it's one thing you're pregnant. Okay, fine. The baby's not here yet. <laughs> you're dealing with the emotions of that. And then the baby comes and you're like, okay, I got a whole human being yeah. that responsible for. So, you know, um, I've dealt with, you know, the, the backbiting, the betrayal people talk to people that I thought that was would be there for me to uplift me and like you know I'm gonna hold your hand through this no it didn't turn out that way um okay. so balanced motherhood and 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 going after what I you know got, um, my heart's desire um I, I looked at my children first I spoke to God and told God you know if you help me <laughs> with this child you know I promise you know I, I went to covenant with him I promised that I would raise my children believing in you and knowing about right. you and I didn't know what I was, you know, what I, what I was doing at, you know, at that time. And then too, also, you know, it's not the end, you know, God is showing me it's not the end. Um, and not only that, throughout anything that we go through in life, if we lean on him, he showed me um, Proverbs 3, 
and five, um, five through six, you know, um, trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lead not unto your own understanding, acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your path. And when I couldn't lean on friends, when I couldn't lean on family, he showed me to lean on him so he could direct my path. Right. Now you have a podcast and I hope my brilliant audience is listening. The name alone to me was so intriguing. I have to know a lot about this. Um, both has a podcast called uh, Bible in Bonnets. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us the unique, how did you come up with that such a unique name and what does it entail? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so, you know, I wanted to encourage um, young women um, to always start your day off with um, the Lord and end your day with the Lord. And, you know, when I have my personal time and my me, me time with God, what am I in? Mm -hmm. My bonnet? <laughs> You know, we always got the bonnet on and, you know, sometimes we don't even start our day, you know, like, you know, the kids are sleeping, they're not up yet <laughs> and we have our bonnets or they are sleeping at night. And, you know, what do we have on our bonnet? So it's just, it, it just clicked. God let it, you know, put it down in my spirit. And I was like, Ooh, this is a, this is a little too much. You know how, when God shows you something yeah. on the download, you're like, Woo. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's how I came about it. So I just want people to know, regardless, start your day with the Lord, your pajamas on, you roll over in bed. When you roll over in bed, what's the first thing? You get on your phone, looking through Facebook, looking through your emails, use your Bible app or have that Bible or have that journal. I even put together a journal as well. Um, I remember when I was younger, um, I had my dear God moments where I used to write dear God, X, Y, and Z, dear God, this person, that, or my wishes. So God just brought it back to remembrance. Okay. And then I put all of that together and then here we are. <laughs> so, so as people are like listening to your podcast, Rose, what do you hope that they're going to gain from it? Because just me sitting on the outside of your outside of where we are right now, it's so intriguing to me that that's the most precious time because it's a quiet time. Mm -hmm. And I'm a person that just loves peace. So what do you hope that your listeners are gaining from that? Because that's what I picked up from it. Yes. So what I hope my listeners pick up from it is that, you know, God forever, God wants a relationship with you. Yes. God is forever listening and God is forever speaking. And these are the moments where, that you start your day off, you know, reading your word, not just reading your word. It could be like an inspirational book or a book with devotion, something to help you start your day. Because once you get outside the walls... <laughs> You know, it's a lot going on. And even to, um, you know, for our children or for our loved ones or for our, our, our spouse or anything, you know, as women also, I do believe God gives us the responsibility to, you know, set the atmosphere in our home, set the atmosphere for our family and set the tone, yeah. um, which I'm also learning too, as we yeah. go through Bible and bonnets <laughs> and certain situations that I face that, you know, I just want the viewers to know that, you know, God is forever speaking, whatever you're dealing with, whatever situation. And even at night too, you know, if that's your peace time at night, you yeah. know, God, thank you for my day. Thank you for the day that I have. You know, when we were younger, as I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. So, you know, it's more in the Bible. It's more that God wants you to know about him and more that he wants to, to speak to you about as well. Yeah. I found a saying, I was in a store shopping, right, Rose? And it said, girls with dreams become women with visions. Mm -hmm. And when I read that, when I tell you light bulbs were just going off, I, it was a picture mm -hmm. and I actually brought it and I put it in my office at church. And the reason I wanted to bring that up is because how do women often face challenges and pursue yet pursue their dreams? What, what How do you find that women do that? Um, I just believe it's in our DNA. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it's in our DNA, which is one. And then two, I believe um, as a child of God, you know, God, you know, he does the miraculous. Yes. He perfect the things concerning us. He blessed the works of our hands. Yes. So if we go to him and the Bible tells us to, you know, write the vision, make it plain. You know, if we go to him with the things that he's telling us he wants to do for us, there's nothing too hard. He's a never ending God. So he, he, he wants you to be the best in all the roles. This is what I got from God. So he gave me children. I'm a mom. So I try to be the best mom that I could be. He gave me a career. I try to be the best nurse that I can be. You know, whether it's ministry, you know, whatever position I'm in, um, I try to give it my all. I try to give it my best. So I just feel that, you know, this is this this is what I've been holding on to as far as that. Yeah. 
Tell me a little bit about your book. So it's actually a journal. Okay. And it's called Bible and Bonnets Time. Okay. Yes, Bible and Bonnets Time. So um, in the book, it has pages where, um, and this is my second um, journal that I had put together. So I, like I said before, God brought, you know, a lot of things back to my remembrance as far as when I was a little girl, my dear God moments. So I have pages in there, you know, where it has dear God. And then you put, um, you know, what are you feeling? You know, dear God, you know, this is what happened with my son. This is what happened with my husband. This is what happened with my mom. Or even to, you know, God's been showing me to, um, write his words. You know, I am a child of God. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You know, I am above and not beneath. You can write it down. You can write your own devotions down, you know, and read it back to you and that to yourself. And then I have a goal tracker where, you know, um, we have goals, you know, yeah. nothing's too small, nothing's too big. It could be a goal of, okay, I want to save $500 by the end of the week. Or, you know, I want to, in a year or two, this is, you know, I want to be a business owner. So there's a goal tracker where you put your goal, the dates and the actions that you're taking. What step did I take towards this goal? Okay, I accomplished this. I got my LLC. Okay, did I open a bank account? Okay, I opened the bank account. Okay, you know, so it helps you with the steps. And then I have another section of it that's um, SOAP Bible study method. Mm. So S is for subject, um, okay. O is for observation. No, I'm sorry. S is for scripture. What's, what's the scripture that I read today? Okay. Um, o is for observation. What did I observe in um, the scripture that I read? And A is for application. How did I apply it or how can I apply it to my life? And then P is for prayer. You know, you write a prayer, you know, thank you for the scripture that I read. In this scripture, it said, you know, cast thy burden on the Lord. Lord, I will trust you. So, you know, it's just a guide to help people because we may know because we grew up in church, but there are other people that don't know how to read the Bible or how to speak to God or how to, you know, use the word of God to work for them in their favor. Yeah. You know, oftentimes, too, as you were speaking, I was thinking about how we highlight, right? So many things that God has helped us to accomplish, which is amazing. I love it. But do we often talk about what it took to get there in our disappointments, our failures, right? Our shortcomings. So because I am just a transparent person, like when I have to go out, I'm very transparent. Oftentimes I share with women that I didn't always... I wasn't always the person that I am today. I didn't always do the things that I do today. Can you kind of highlight, and again, not being personal, or that's not my point, but highlight on those things that didn't go right, those things that you had to overcome, or when those detours came, wow, Rose had to go down a different path. Can you kind of highlight on that? Because I think that's the realness that people look for in people like us. And because we're on podcasts, we're on streaming, we're on so many platforms. People want to know that you're touchable like I am. Yes. Right? Still, still touchable. Still, still you touchable. know, crying, <laughs> sitting in the car like, oh my goodness, God. <laughs> um, but, you know, as we um, go through the trials and the tribulations and the experience, we gain wisdom. So, yes, there are times I wanted to give up. Um, I, I could remember um, trying to get into nursing school and you have to take entrance exams. So I'm like, OK, you know, I'm going to go after nursing school. And I went to one school. Um, and this was the LPN um, school. I went to one, um, didn't make the cut, went to another, didn't make the cut. And the last one, I made the cut. Um, some of my peers, um, they went straight from high school to college to nerd, to RN. And yeah. my steps were, you know, home health aid, CNA, LPN, RN. But the fact that I didn't give up and the fact that I knew that God was on my side and the fact that in every position that I held, you know, I felt the urge like, okay, God, I know you want more for me. I know you want me to go back. And, you know, I've always um, held on to that. And then, you know, God just did the work, did the magic. And <laughs> so this is where I be, huh? Right. No, I was just saying, I love that. I love that. Yeah, the steps were not easy. Um, even being a homeowner, there are times where I went for this loan and they said no, and that, that went to this place, and they're like, no, your credit and not enough money. And then when it was the time, God said, okay, this is the time, and He opened the door. So just don't give up. You know, God is a God where you know we we find roadblocks. 
it makes us stronger, which is one. And then not only that, too, we do find the enemy try to block us. And that's when we, you know, yeah. use our faith and use the power and authority that God has given us, you know, and don't give up because the devil wants us to give up. That's one thing. The devil wants us to give up, be in our minds, be in our thoughts and think negative. So just don't give up. How did you manage your emotions through it all? Because emotions are terrible leaders, as I think we all know. And you mentioned in, in the beginning of the show how you had to overcome betrayal and different things like that. How did you manage your emotions? Because that was probably one of my greatest, in this transparent moment right now, my greatest challenge was managing my emotions. And I had to learn how to forgive. That's an emotion, right? Trying to do that. But how did you manage yours? So I'm I'm still learning. And okay. the reason why I'm saying I'm still learning is because as God takes us to higher heights, it's different um level of um, I want to say betrayal, yeah. disappointments and stuff that we gotta go through. Um, God always brought me back to the scripture. If you can't walk with the footman, how are you gonna run with the horseman? So it's like, okay, if you can't handle this. <laughs> This person, yeah, lied on you. This person talked about you. So when I bring you to greater heights, how are you going to deal with, you know, that level of, you know, situation? You have to have tough skin. And also, too, I, I want to bring up that, you know, he's surrounded. There are times in my life he surrounded me with um, women of God that were, and they're still in my life right now. Um, one of them is Pastor Tanya Williams. She was my mentor. She started a um, Fab 10 mentoring group. And that was at a point in my life when I was like, okay, God, I'm done. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to try you one more time, you know, because I am like so, so done. And she started this mentoring group. And till this day, like I've just seen, you know, she's very anointed. You know, her prayers break chains and walls and everything. And I was I'm so glad for being um a part of it and around her. And there are other young um, um, women of God that prayed me through. So I do believe that. Um, find, I don't want to say pray for God to send you that group of women, the praying woman that will encourage you and cover you spiritually and emotionally. I didn't really have that back in the day. I, I, I've had it for the last 10 years and I've really been <laughs> blooming. Um, and also to um, be that woman that you wanted somebody to be to you. Yeah, yeah. Be encouraging, be prayerful for that young woman or that young lady or that, that, um, woman of God that God connected you with. Don't do the backbiting. Don't do the betrayal. Wow. Be understanding. Be that woman that you want. You wanted, you know, the person to be to you. Yeah. And, you know, I'm so glad you brought that up, Rosa, because that's what I was going to mention, too, is that sometimes, like you said, as women, we can be the backbiting women. And it's so important to remember not where you came from. But before you can get to where you need to go, you have to take people with you. Yes. And I think, right, that is so important to understand. We had to stand on somebody's shoulders to get to where we are. So why not let somebody stand on our shoulders? Absolutely. You know, we're going to take a commercial break, right? But when we come back, I'm going to share something, or rather Rose is going to share something with you about something else that she's in. And I think it's pretty, pretty awesome. We'll be right back on Girl Talk with Jean Price. Because Bible and bondage is actually, you know, we have busy lives. It's to encourage um, people to, before they start their day and when they end their day, you know, while we have our Bibles and bondage on, to seek God, you know, thank God for the day that we're going to have or thank God for the day that we're, we, we had. You know, what can you tell these mothers, um, encouraging word, <coughs> what book you use, whatever it is, <laughs> so you can encourage these mothers to stay on track.
Welcome back to Real Talk with Jean Price. We've been having an amazing conversation this evening with my guest, Rose Eliza. And she has a story that I think a lot of us can relate to, but I think it's also so inspiring. So I want to welcome back my guest tonight, Rose, to Real Talk with Jean Price. Hi, thank you. Absolutely. Before we went to commercial break, I said to the ladies that are watching tonight, Stephanie, Shaniqua, Tammy, of course, Catherine is always watching, and even someone named Divine is watching. Rose is involved with something that I thought was so amazing, but I'm going to let Rose share with us. Tell us what you got involved in and how what you're doing with the USA and all that. So I just competed in a beauty pageant. And it's called Miss Caribbean um, Full Figure USA. The, um, the CEO is Teresa Randolph, and um, USA stands for United Sisters of America. And my platform was empowering single mothers, whether widowed, single, divorced, by choice. Um, a, a, along my path, um, I was a single mother, wasn't by choice, but then I've met other women that became single mothers, whether they were widowed, whether they were divorced. Um, some of these young women too, they're, they're you know, men or whatever, <laughs> you know, got incarcerated and they became a single mother. So my, my platform is pretty much encouraging them. Um, you can do it, you know, whatever challenge, and you can raise children with the love, with God's love um, in, in a positive manner, you know, despite whatever the situation is. Yeah. So in the pageant, um, kind of tell us how, what made you even decide to be a part of a pageant? Because I think it's so inspiring to just know that women can just go out there and really accomplish some things that you probably never thought you would. What inspired you to do it? So actually, you know, um, when I was younger, I was always creative, always liked fashion, always, you know, you know, I'm not an ugly woman, <laughs> but I was busy with the cares of life and, you know, certain things um, I put aside as well. And then um, one of the ladies in church, um, her name is, um, um, she's one, she's the ambassador as well, Miss Sheena okay. Bailey. Yes. And she's a poet, poet, and she's a writer as well. And um, one day we were in church and she was like, oh, you know, there's going to be a Caribbean branch. She knows I'm from the Caribbean. And then she was like, you should try it. And, you know, I said, okay, I tried it. And, you know, it was amazing. I met some wonderful women in different walks of life as well. And, you know, it's a big confidence booster. And not only that too, you know, a passion that I had as a young girl, you know, that I don't want to say it was buried, but I had to put it aside because I had, you know, obligations to my children, to my spiritual life and, you know, to my future, you know, why not now? <laughs> why not now? You know, why not now? So I'm, I'm really happy that I did do it. And I met some wonderful people as well that facing challenges and we're there to uplift each other, help each other, um, motivate each other, network with each other. Cause you know, we all have something inside of us and what great gave me great joy is they gave me an award for my Bible and bonnets. And the award was the rising star award. And they were saying how they're listening, they're watching and they they're encouraged and everything. So I, I was so amazed by that. I was like, okay, God, I know I heard you then. <laughs> I know I heard you. <laughs> what can we expect from Rose in the future? What other plans? What other things you have going on? So expect um, with my nonprofit organization, um, I'm really trying to do stuff. Um, I've done stuff overseas. I want to do stuff locally. I volunteer at, at a shelter um, that helps um, young men and women between the ages of 18 and 23. And some of these young ladies I see, I see myself, you know, but, you know, I, I never went into a shelter, but they're there with their children. You know, they, they face in challenges challenges and young men facing challenges and it tries to do job placement for them. Um, also, you know, the, the journal, the bonnets is in the background. You can see um, um, it has Jesus love me on it um, with, the, you know, I'm trying to encourage and let people know that Jesus loves them no matter what. Um, what else do I have? I, I sell hair. <laughs> I'm trying to get into the beauty world. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to obtain everything that, you know, God put in me, everything as a little girl yeah. that I dreamt of. There's yeah. no limits to God. If, you know, if I pray about it, if I believe that God can do it for me, 
roses just want to bloom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, this show today is is it it's its whole focus is not just on Rose, but it's something that Rose has done. And I wanted to kind of talk about that. And then ladies that are in the chat, it's about boldness. And as you can hear from Rose's story tonight, she really did not. And thank you, Janice, for saying there's no limits to God and what God can do. You took you just allow boldness to lead you, to guide you, and to direct you. If you had to speak to somebody else today, as far as boldness is concerned, what would you say to them? And ladies, I want you to write in the chat as well. What could you do to cause boldness to stick out for you? Because boldness, all I hear is you're talking is boldness. So boldness. When we look up the word boldness, it says showing an ability to take risks, confident and courageous. Yes. We know we are confident in God. We are know we are courageous in God. And this is what I mean by going into your word, reading your devotions, reading your Bible to know who you are in God and what God has for you. And then when we know who we are confident and we are courageous, you know, we must take risks. If you look all around us, you know, if you look all around us, um, people are taking risks, yeah. um, business, um, finances. The world is full of risk, <laughs> taking risks. And us as children of God, we take risks. And we know that we got back up and our backup is God. He tell us to be confident. He tell us to be courageous. He tell us to trust in him, lean and depend on him. So that's where my boldness come from. Okay. Now in your boldness, I don't know how old your children are. Do you feel that you are transferring that to your children? Of course, in a great way. Do you feel mm -hmm. that? So I am transferring um, to them. In a great way, I have a 20-year-old son, oh, okay. a 15-year-old son, and I have a three-year-old daughter as well. Um, so my first two boys, yes, they are um, taking risks. They're still trying to find themselves, um, especially my 20-year-old. You know, um, what my parents didn't know, you know, they migrated from Haiti to a different country, to the United States. So all they knew was, you know, education, work. So me being raised here, um, the opportunities that I see, I'm trying to encourage them and motivate them as well. So they're still trying to find themselves. And my job is to, you know, not only cover them in prayer and lead them, but my, ch and, and, you know, teach them spiritually. Yes. Um, but my job is to, you know, guide, let them know that you don't have to go through what I went through. You know, I went through it for okay. you. So now you're a step up. <laughs> Every generation is supposed to be better than the next. So you're a step up. So just take full advantage of it. And mommy got you and God got Amen. you. One of our guests tonight wrote a quote in her in her top, in, in her little block there. And I want to talk about this for a second. She said, Shaniqua, one of my favorite quotes is says, to be great is to be misunderstood. Can you relate to that? Oh, yes. <laughs> I, mean, you know, I think we all can relate to that. Let's, I, let's talk about that. I can relate to it in every area, every stage that I went through in my life, from having my baby to people. Um, I was told that, um, oh, all you need to do now is just work and take care of your kids, and that's it. Mm -hmm. You know, now I'm an RN. I'm a homeowner. You know, I have different business ventures. So if I would have listened to the people telling me, okay, just work and take care of your kid, I would not be here. You know, um, Bible and bonnets. I started Bible and bonnets and I had somebody who's like, well, you starting it, but you don't have no viewers. I'm like, well, you know, um, I got to build my viewers. So if I were to listen to that, you know, at the pageant, I got an award for it, you know, so which is confirmation that keep going and doing it. Um, so yes, I'm misunderstood because, you know, I know what God put in me and I know what I see and I know what I feel. And people are like, oh, she crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you think she can do this, you know? So um, even with being misunderstood, I've learned sometimes you just got to zip it and just yep. do it. And then just trust God through the process. Yeah. Because even as you're talking, Rose, my mind went to Noah. And oftentimes people looked at him like, who, what? Like, what are you doing? Those in his office held on to what God gave him and what God showed him and most importantly, what God wanted him to do. So I, I salute you for doing that and being misunderstood. I had to learn is all part of the journey because mm -hmm. oftentimes people are not going to understand to your point, the vision, there's a vision that God gave you. If you had to say something to your young Rose, young Rose, what would you say to young Rose? <laughs> oh, the young Rose of young Rose, young Rose. Um, <laughs> You know, 
you're you're beautiful you're smart you're talented you know um god has use for you um don't trust and listen to what people are saying you know li listen to god you know and be discernful, you know, ask God to give you the spirit of discernment. Because if I was able to discern certain things, I wouldn't get involved with the wrong friends, with the wrong people, or make certain decisions. Um, the devil will try to come and block <laughs> what God has for you or detour you. Um, there right. is such thing as this many killers. Um, so if I was to talk to the yeah. young Rose, I would just tell her, be, be discernful, you know, trust God through all the process. Um, you know, who God is sending in your life and, and be discernful of who also the devil is sending in your life to block you, to speak negativity yeah. in you, um, in your ears, to stop you from your destination. That's powerful. And again, as you're talking, I'm thinking about Nehemiah in the word of God, where he had a commission. He knew mm. that he get the walls built back up and there was those people just just speaking in and just trying to bring it down and i think it's so important for us as women if we can take what you just said and apply it to every aspect of our life when we're dealing with each other mm -hmm. i think the greatest thing we have is a community and it'll be a strong community and mm -hmm. so i just wanted to ask you that because i used to say to myself rose my my younger self right because i've been through things in life i used to say i never wanted to identify with the younger me but I know in order for me to be the me I am, I had to. Mm -hmm. In your life, facing pain, was it hard for you? Um, it was hard. It was hard because it's it's something that I did not know as far yeah. as, you know, my pain came from people that I trusted, people that I thought would be there for me, people that I thought was being there for other people. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm going through, they're going to be there for me. But God had a different plan. I, I truly believe that God literally just wanted me to just trust solely on him. I'll get you the house. I'll, I'll get you the career. You didn't have to borrow the money. You know, I'll I'll set the the plan up. You don't have to. Um, how should I say? You don't have to settle for less. You don't have to do certain things to get a step up. I'll get you the step up. The earth is His and the fullness thereof. So He controls and put everything in His hand. So I feel like, and He connects the dots. So um, I feel like telling other people, a, a young woman, that you don't have to settle for less. Trust in God. Um, he has the master clan. Yes, the devil. You know, one thing I learned, like you said earlier, forgiveness. You know, in this season, I'm learning to forgive those who misunderstood me, those who spoke against me, those who betrayed me because it was part of the devil's plan, you know, to put them in my path to, to try to detour me. But now, you know, now that I'm a, a, a more wiser and I'm still learning, like I said, I'm still learning. I forgive them because I'm like, I know God has greater for me for tomorrow, for my children, for my generation, you know, for my children's children. So this is, this is my mentality now. <laughs> right. That's beautiful. Before we wrap up the show again, to my viewing audience, I, I think Rose has laid such a beautiful foundation to what triumph looks like. As I'm listening to you, I just see triumph and you're no longer a victim, but you are now walking in the, the shoes of victory. And I think that's so beautiful because I think oftentimes as women, we don't realize how strong we really are. Of course, with the help of God, we don't realize it. So before we close out tonight, there, there are women that are writing in the chat, they're writing in the chat, Rose. If you could think of one word that you want to encourage the ladies that are watch, watching, what would that word be? Um, love. And the reason why I choose love is something that I wish that I knew um, when I was younger, okay. not that um, like my, you know, there's the love of your parents, there's the love of your friends, there's the love of your peers, but mm -hmm. tap into God's love. And the reason why I say tap into God's love, when you tap into God's love, the unconditional love, you know, you learn to love yourself. I had a problem loving myself because I didn't understand what love was. Yes, my parents loved me. They fed me. They sheltered me. They gave me their best. But when you tap into God's love, that's a different type of love. You could love yourself and then you learn to love others. Mm 
So you'll see a lot of times I'm always posting, Jesus loves me, Jesus loves me. That's one of the um, songs that I um, learned as a little girl. Yes, Jesus loved me. That helped me get through my tough times and I would tap into his love. So now that I, I, I tapped into his love, loving myself, I can love my beautiful sisters. I can love all my children on another level. I can love, you know, you do something to me. Yes, it hurts. <laughs> You know, every day is an experience, you know, but, you know, God has given me wisdom that, you know what, I forgive you. I love you with the, the love of the Lord. Yeah, that's beautiful. And you know what, when you even said it, then of course, the word of God tells us the greatest of these is love. Uh, Rose summed it up to my audience tonight. She summed it up with one word and that is it. It is love. It's, it is love because that's the thing that gets us over in everything and every aspect of our life. Listen, to our viewing audience, I want you to write something in the chat to Rose. I want you to write it to her. I want you to write something to keep her encouraged, to keep on, stay on her podcast, to keep moving. Because, you know, I think this is what, again, what the show is about, right, Rose? We are here to be a platform for Rose to come back on. Let us see what's going on. We want to push her podcast. We want people to listen. Could they put some information on the screen about her podcast for me, please? And Rose, can you hold up the journal so we can see that again? I want us to support her. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to support all those that we can. Look at that. Bible and bonnets. That's a beautiful. Oh, I love that. It says Bible and bonnets time. What does it say? Journal? Uh, journal where we start and end our day with the Lord with our Bible and bonnets. And I want you all to find a way to support her. This was a great show. It was a platform where someone can talk about their trials, talk about their destiny, but most importantly, talk about their triumph. And look, she actually has a bonnet in the back of her screen. So I want you all to just, if you before we close out, write something nice to Rose. We want you to know we encourage you, we support you. We support you. She's on Facebook, right? Are you on Instagram too? I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. I'm on TikTok. Um, you can email me at r.eliza2020 at gmail.com. You know, the rose is about to bloom and I am ready for it for what God has in store for me that I can share with you all. <laughs> yeah. I want to tell you what Tammy wrote to you. Tammy Russ said, thank you for accepting your assignment. We need you on the battlefield to save souls. You're awesome. Janice wrote, Rose, keep being a phenomenal woman. Continue to let the Lord use you. Catherine wrote, thank you. Just said, beautifully said. So we want you to know that come, comes from the heart is love. Thank you tonight to our viewing audience for watching us and being with us on Real Talk. Again, a Real Talk is surrounded by stories and categories and topics that bring to light things that people need to hear. So I want to thank you for joining me tonight. Again, follow Rose on uh, Facebook. Follow her on Instagram. She has a great show. And most importantly, watch her podcast. Because this is the podcast you see now. You don't know where she's going to be in the future. If you want to watch her, a woman in boldness who took a risk, to be who she is today. God bless you. Good night.